Hi, this is James Headley. Welcome back to the Living in Naples channel. Today I want to talk to you about the seven deadly sins that Naples home buyers should avoid. As always, if you are, like what you see here, please do like, subscribe, and share uh, with your friends, family, coworkers, etc. I look forward to working with you. And if you have questions about anything uh, that you see here or anything about the buying or selling process here in Naples, Marco Island area, uh, please do get in touch with me anytime. Uh, so with that said, I hope you'll stick around until the end of this video when I will share the two best tips uh, that I can give you for avoiding these uh, seven deadly sins of the Naples home buyer, uh, as well as any related uh, snafus that you might make along the way. Uh, so with that, let's dive right in with number one. And that is not knowing how much home you can afford. Get your financing pre-approval, if you think that you're going to be paying anything but cash, thinking about uh, financing any, any portion of the home here, uh, and think about and, and understand what the total budget looks like. What are those HOA dues? What are, what's insurance look like? What are the other fees associated with the home that you need to be aware of? Club dues, etc. So taking those two elements together, you know, the financing, if, if you're using it, plus that uh, overall budget for maintaining the home, living in the home, etc. cetera. Uh, know what you can afford and, and be realistic about that. And that brings me to second sin, and that is wasting time looking at homes that you can't afford. I don't want to waste your time. I, I hope you don't want to waste my time. But beyond the, the, the time that's invested, it's also just a, a psychological hurdle that you put up for yourself. If you're looking at homes that you know that ultimately aren't going to be able to afford, you fall in love with one, you compare everything else to it, and they all pale in comparison. Whereas if you hadn't seen it, uh, then there, then some of the homes that you're seeing that are in your price range you know, probably would be spectacular for you, uh, if not compared uh, relatively to that uh, to that other home that's that's just outside the budget. Uh, so so absolutely don't do it to yourself. I just just trust me on that one. And that brings us to number three. And number three is is wasting time looking at homes that won't fit your life or in your lifestyle. Are the amenities not right in the community, but you talk yourself into the area? Is the location wrong? If the amenities are right, um, those are definitely going to be you know some of those big issues. Is the home too small for your needs? You know, are you being driven purely by your budget, but you've got family and friends who are going to visit and and a two bedroom condo just isn't going to meet your needs and you really need that third bedroom uh, let's let's really get under that at the front end so that you're not again investing that time looking at homes that ultimately aren't going to be right for you uh, and hopefully you, may, you find that out before you actually make an offer before you actually purchase but even then you still would be better spent our time would be better spent together finding something that is a better fit for you uh, so that brings us to number four and that's being indecisive. Homes are selling in minutes, hours, days still here, uh, certainly in weeks or a week. It, we're not looking at months or years with homes sitting on the market here. So when you do find that, that home that's right for you, you really have to be ready to make the move. You really need to be ready to make that offer. Uh, same day, I, you know, going back, the luxury of going back and seeing a home four or five times just isn't there. I'm not going to pressure you to make an offer you know, five minutes after seeing, uh, seeing that at home, but at the same time, just know that the longer you take to make that decision, there are a lot of other people probably making that same decision uh, on that same property. So just be ready to move and, and, and avoid the indecisiveness that can really come back to bite you. So number five, uh, and that's making an uncompetitive offer. And this isn't just about price, but this can be about have the contingencies that are involved in your offer. If you have too many contingencies, you're not going to compete as strongly with a, a cleaner offer, as it were. Uh, special terms that, that you're requiring. Uh, is the home listed as unfurnished and you absolutely want it to be furnished? Uh, let's make that offer and, and I do that an awful lot. Uh, but at the same time, know that, that that may just not work out for the seller. Uh, and then of course, 
you know, making a lowball offer in a seller's market. I want to negotiate the best possible price for you, but you, but we also need to go in recognizing what kind of market we're in um, and and operate within the constraints of that market. Uh, so the lowball offer is not likely to be accepted in in this type of market. And that brings us to number six, um, and it, it also related to negotiating and to pricing, and that's wanting to win a negotiation. And I would just say this, you know, is is a couple thousand dollars worth losing your dream home over, regardless of whether that price point is a few hundred thousand dollar condo, but certainly if it's a million dollar plus home, is a hundred dollar handyman project worth fighting over when it comes to the inspection process uh, with a you know with a seller? Just kind of keep the big picture in mind, and and I'll do my best to help you to do that as well. And then finally. Uh, the, the last of these, uh, the seven deadly sins of the Naples home buyer is the failure to communicate. This can be with me, but it's, it's more likely, quite honestly, with inspectors, with the title company, with the lender, uh, etc. So all, lots of people have, their, have a hand in the process and are here to support you and to service you and make sure that you get to the closing table, but they can only do so much if you're not providing the answers that they're seeking uh, and the information that they, they come to you to get. Uh, so just maintain that that open line of communication know that you're going to have to communicate i will will do as much as i can to take uh the burden of some of that communication off of you uh but there are elements where i where i simply have to defer to you and, and need you to communicate with those um, those respective professionals so uh, as i promised I, I do have two tips for avoiding these sins um, one would be to ask questions i any realtor worth their salt is going to work with you to provide context and, and the general lay of land of the process. But I want you to ask me about anything that isn't clear. Um, I want you to, if you want more information than I'm giving you, just ask me. Um, I'm happy to provide you more, as much information as you like. Uh, I want, I'm transparent and I'm, I'm brutally honest and direct uh, with my clients, uh, probably to a fault at times. But at the same time, I, I don't want to overload uh, you with information. So it's it's that balance. And if you ask me, I'll tell you. I'll, let's just leave it with that. Uh, and number two, and and somewhat related, is is to trust but verify. Uh, you know that old adage. You know you're you hire professionals for a reason. Whether it be me, hopefully as a realtor, an inspector, etc. So you, you have to trust that, that we're knowledgeable and looking out for your best interests. Um, that said, think about why you've you've gone ahead and hired uh, your lender, chosen the lender that you have, or chosen a re the realtor that you have. Stumble upon a realtor because their office was in the community that you were uh, that you first walked into when you made a trip to Naples. You know, that realtor may be the best possible fit for you. Um, but it may have just been the the accidental, uh, you know, sort of accidental uh, connection there. Um, so, you know, have you checked out their their professional website? Have you checked them out on LinkedIn? Uh, you know, are they the, are they a good fit for you? Uh, and if you start to have any doubts at all, and you're not hearing what you think you should be hearing, or your gut's telling you that something just is off a bit, then I'd encourage you again. I go back to number one: ask those questions and and continue to get into the process and, and if you don't feel comfortable then you know simply walk away um, I'd rather if, if I'm on the other side of that I would rather that you feel comfortable with such a large purchase uh, and and that I'm not involved in that process then you go through that process with me and you feel like you, it wasn't the right process for you and it wasn't the right fit for you uh, so hopefully with uh, that these tips will be helpful to you and you'll be able to avoid uh, some of these common mistakes. And uh, as always, if I can help you in any way, shape or form, please do get in touch. And I appreciate you subscribing to the channel and liking and sharing it with your friends. Until next time, I'm James Headley and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks.